Okay, so um, I'm Katie. I am the Daily News Managing Editor for Americas and the UK at LinkedIn. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about what that means and what it actually means to have editors at LinkedIn and why we did that. Um, so uh, this is a little snippet of the team. I'm the red dot over there. Um, but so how many of you have a LinkedIn profile? Great, this is a good start. How many of you are active on LinkedIn weekly? Pretty good, okay. Daily? Still really good, you guys are awesome. Um, so we are the world's largest online professional network with uh, more than 630 million members globally. Uh, we're in over 200 countries and territories. Um, and I forget how many languages, but a lot. Uh, and so our mission is to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful, which sounds very lofty. Um, and that manifests itself in a whole bunch of different ways. So sort of, oops, nope. Sort of three main pillars that that actually translates into uh, for members in particular and the way we kind of organize our thoughts around products is uh, stay informed, get the right job, and build meaningful re relationships. So we're not just a job site. We're also, uh, you know, we're, we're your professional hub. And that's really uh, what we're trying to build and what we're trying to be. So content and editors uh, are a key component to that. Um, so we kicked off our editorial operations in 2011 um, when our editor-in-chief, Dan Roth, joined from Fortune. At the time, I think a lot of people thought he was crazy and thought LinkedIn was crazy uh, for hiring an editor. Um, what does that mean? What does it mean for a platform like LinkedIn to essentially go all in on this? Um, so we were about half a dozen people, 10 people or so for, you know, the first few years. Um, and now we are uh, more than 60 editors across the globe uh, in eight different languages um, and offices everywhere. Um, our mission as a team uh, is to provide professionals with the news and views they need to talk about the things that matter. So what that means and the way that it kind of ties into our three main value props um, is essentially that the more you are talking about things that are gonna make you look smarter, um, the more that's gonna help you get a job or deepen relationships at your existing job or stay in touch with uh, other people who could give you opportunity. What that means for LinkedIn as a platform is that if you have a reason to come to the site every day, and news is a great reason to do that, you will get the most out of it, you will engage more. So our team uh, you know, really wants to help professionals be better at what they do. Um, and our ideal sort of use case is you know, something like you uh, read some news and, or some insights on LinkedIn in the morning and then you go into your meeting and you're like, oh hey, did you hear about this thing that affects your industry? Um, and that does happen all the time. So we have 60 plus editors across the globe um, and we kind of, we're focusing a lot on engaging members in different ways. So we break that into three main sections, uh, create, cultivate, and curate. So a lot of our team does uh, original storytelling, original reporting in various ways, um, whether that's a podcast like Hello Monday, um, the Daily Rundown, which is a daily digest of uh, news stories that probably many or most of you get in your notifications tab every day, um, live interviews, um, data-driven journalism um, using member insights, uh, lists called like top companies, which ranks where uh, our members want to work um, in different regions. Um, we also are curating voices of members. And so this is, I think, one of the main things that's a bit different in terms of what we do compared to what might happen in a traditional newsroom. Um, we consider ourselves to be lucky enough to be able to gather various perspectives on a story that may not be talking to each other anywhere else. So if we have, let's say, uh, you know, a story about something Amazon is doing, we can have an Amazon executive talking to someone working in their warehouse, talking to a logistics and supply chain expert, et cetera. Um, so we wanna bring all those conversations together. So one of the main ways that we do that is uh, our trending topics. And so you can kind of see the today's news and views section. Um, it's on the right side of your desktop or in the search tab of your mobile app. Um, and those are all 
created by editors and curated by editors. So we're essentially scouring for whatever's going on in the news that affects the professional world, um, things that people are talking about on LinkedIn that are bubbling up in different ways and trying to gather all the best uh, and, and smartest perspectives around those stories. And then kind of related to that, Cultivate is another piece of what we do. So uh, we kicked off um, in the very early days with the influencer program, which is what a lot of people um, know about LinkedIn content or, or did. Um, that was essentially our first step into uh, serious original content on the platform. So, um, you know, we got industry leaders from Richard Branson um, to, you know, Bill Gates to, oh good, that's not showing. I'm getting a, an application is quitting, but it's not showing there, so that's good. Uh, uh, to, to start publishing original long form content in the platform. So we still work with a lot of those folks, but once we kind of expanded things open to members, um, you know, it really became something that everyone could take advantage of and build a following and all of that. So we work a lot with uh, newsrooms, journalism, or journalists. Um, we work with people in particular industries, so we have editors that focus on healthcare or finance, that kind of thing. Um, and then we do a lot to just try to engage with members in different uh, industries in general. So, why are you not? Okay. So this is my direct team. Um, and basically, we oversee that daily news coverage for North America and the UK. Um, we are split across North America, uh, Australia, and London to give us 24-hour coverage. Um, and the bulk of what we do is really keeping the news desk going. So um, a lot of that is the daily rundown, which is our daily digest um, of news. Um, that goes out to millions of members uh, in different regions across the globe. We have 12 different editions of that now. Um, trending topics, which are those curated uh, pieces of news or, or things that people are talking about. We do a lot of outreach to members in different ways, um, whether that's uh, you know literally just sending them an in-mail one-on-one um, and saying, hey, you're an expert in this, we'd love for you to weigh in. Uh, or sending a notification uh, to members who are going to be particular experts or well-versed in whatever the topic is. We also do work very actively with publishers. Um, I would imagine at least some of the people in this room are already working with us in some way, but we uh, collaborate directly with newsrooms to get their journalists publish, uh, posting excuse me, on the platform in various ways. Um, and we really use a lot of the posts that are coming from other journalists and other newsrooms to you know, give them visibility so that their work gets to be front and center for members. Um, so if you are you know, looking to build up your presence on LinkedIn, there are a few different things that you can do. Um, one is share your perspective. So you know, we get a lot of posts that are basically, here's my article, link, that's it. Um, you know, what the key to success is to encourage people to have conversations. So if you can get people talking, that's going to you know, make sure you're tapping into all the right viral effects on the site, show up in other people's feeds, start building up a following. Um, and, and a lot of that comes from talking about your unique perspective and what you actually are adding to the story. If you can make it personal, um, or you can you know, encourage people to talk human to human, that's what's gonna set you up for success. Um, the other is, you know, be consistent. Um, this is true across any social platform. Um, you know, it, it matters to help keep bubbling up in people's feeds to keep people seeing you. Um, stay on top of trends. The more timely you can be, the better, um, you know, for people who are working in news. This is usually the easiest thing. For other contributors, it can be a bit tougher. Um, and then again, you know, try to get people talking. That's, you know, the thing that we're constantly thinking about as editors is what's going to get people talking, what's already get, getting people talking, and what are the best perspectives on whatever that story is. Um, you know, some examples you can see, so this is one of the trending topics that we have. We very often feature, uh, you know, journalists in the posts and the things, that, things that they're saying front and center in those, they get great visibility. Um, Nick Thompson at Wired posts a video just of himself talking in his office, presumably every single day about whatever is interesting in tech that day. Does really well, he gets a lot of engagement. He's built up a huge following. Um, what? 
Yeah, it's great. Like, and it's it's super casual. It doesn't need to be this beautiful, polished thing. Um, you know, so we have a lot of just really great commentary and people saying really interesting things, and and that's really the goal. Um, so if you you know if you want to start posting more, if you want posts to uh, you know get attention and get traction, if you want to be featured by us in a trending topic. Um, these are some of the things that we recommended that we directly tell uh, newsrooms. Um, you know, first person, person approachable writing style. So, you know, if you can add an element of yourself to it. Um, analyze whatever the story is. Again, you know, something that's just like, here's my article, click away, isn't necessarily going to get people engaged. Um, you know, at mention anybody who might be relevant. You know, one thing that we actually do a lot is just at mention experts that we know or people in our networks to say, hey, what do you think about this story? That works really well and people love to be asked. Um, at hashtags, you know, all those sort of general discoverability type things that you would see anywhere else. And then, you know, again, to try to get people talking, add a question at the end. Um, ideally, something that is going to encourage more than a yes or no. Oh, and that's it. That was really fast. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> what percentage would you say is the amount of traffic that a, that any type of um, news organization would get from LinkedIn? It varies from newsroom to newsroom, and it varies from article to article. Um, you know, it's, it, there are a lot of things that can help uh, build up traffic. Um, one of those is building up individual journalists so that they themselves have a following, um, you know, which is again something that we've kind of directly worked with a lot of newsrooms to uh, encourage and to have particular people who are, uh, have networks that are active and engaged themselves so that that's going to help give it a bump. Um, but we've seen a lot of sort of like major hits where it's absolutely been, you know, a huge uh, percentage of referral traffic and then some where it's less so. There's not really like a benchmark that's true ac across all newsrooms. I would also actually, one more thing, sorry, related to that. I would also think about topics. So, I mean, obviously, LinkedIn is a professional network. Um, that's going to affect the kinds of things that feel like it would make sense. Um, but within that, like, professional can be a lot of different things. It can obviously be things related to the workplace or the future of work or careers, um, definitely things related to particular industries. And that can be very broad. That can be, you know, something in sports or entertainment just as easily as something in, you know, tech or finance. Um, so, but thinking about what's going to make sense, I mean, we always kind of joke that, like, we're not really the platform for cat videos. So, like, just thinking about, like, what is a professional audience going to care about and what's the angle that they're going to be most interested in? Well, Uh, hello, uh, I'm Nick. Uh, on your last slide, the two screenshots were for posts on other sites, Business Insider and Quartz, and I think certainly in my network I see a lot of people posting links to Medium or to posts published elsewhere. Are you looking to get people more for LinkedIn to become their primary medium of publishing posts as well for you to be able to share them and like ramp up the editing and the publishing of posts or still be a network for sharing posts that might be somewhere else? We are really mainly concerned with getting people talking, and, and I'm sorry, I feel like I keep saying that exact phrase. I need to think of new ways to say it. Um, we, we want to see the conversations wherever they start and however, however they happen to be. So I forget the latest, I'm sure the stat has been updated, but the last time I remember hearing the stat, we had something like 150,000 to 200,000 long form articles published on the platform a week. I think it's grown a lot since then. I think that's several years old. Um, we have lots of that content, and it is starting great conversations. But we've seen a lot of growth in, uh, you know, people posting and people uh, recording videos. You know, if it if it links elsewhere, that's fine. 
Um, you know, and, and yeah, most of the stuff that in the screenshots that I had is linking out, you know, and especially because it's a lot of, uh, you know, journalists who are sharing stuff to their own site. That's totally fine. Um, what we are, you know, really thinking about is can we create a community around whatever the topic is, whatever the piece of news is, the content, uh, you know, within the comment section, within some means of, you know, bringing people together to talk about that. So it's more about that, regardless of medium, no pun intended, than publishing, per se. Hello. Hi, Katie. I'm Jacob. Uh, we saw on a few of those posts people using hashtags. Mm -hmm. How worthwhile and effective are they uh, for organizations and individuals to be using to maximize or improve their exposure and engagement? I mean, I think it's similar to most platforms in the sense that like some a few relevant hashtags are a great idea and you know a hashtag bomb is not um it is we do definitely see people not only adding hashtags to their own stuff but clicking through um and following the various topics that are are tied to those hashtags um and then once you're following it you know that can surface in their feeds etc so you know i would say like it's absolutely worth using it's it's a great discoverability tool as anywhere um, but you know be mindful about it rather than just adding everything <laughs>